Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Thursday. All right, twelve thirty. Someone make try to make a comment. Okay. Finding love on a. What's up? Okay. Somebody trying to get my attention. Okay, just a reminder, I, I do have a requirement that everybody be showing their, their beautiful faces on their, on their camera. If they're not, then they need to um, be sending me an email explaining why they can't be on camera. So Melissa, Katie, guys have an issue? Sylvia, Natalie, Courtney. Okay, I'll take a look later and make sure everybody's sort of on board with that. So again, I really want everybody to be showing themselves on their Zoom camera, please. Show video. Okay. All right, so we had just gone through Here we go. All right, we just gone through aromaticity and I went through the the problems that related to what you'd see on the test. So let me let me pull up a, an old test here so you can see what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about here is question, I think it's two, am I wrong? No, not question two, question three, here we go. So the first three questions are going to be the same. It doesn't matter what test, this is what you're going to see. Definitely something to do with the, the seven membered rings and not the, not the six membered rings. The information you need to solve this one is that for the one with the plus on it, you're going to see that's one, two, three double bonds, which means we're total, do, dealing with a total of six pi electrons. And in the case oh, of, sorry, can't sorry. Screen. We you can't see, see my, screen. you can't see my screen. I, really? I, see it. I can no, see, I see it. it. I can yeah. see it. I see. I can see it. All right. Uh, who can't see my screen? Me. Just you, Keisha? I guess so. Oh, <laughs> it's a bit sad, isn't it? All right, let me. Um, Never mind, I got it. Oh, you got Thank it? You. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so while I got you here, could you talk to me after class, please? You're not in okay. trouble, but I just want to talk to you after class. Thanks. Okay. Saves me sending you an email. All right. So in the first two, we've got, I mean, in these here, you can see we've got six pi electrons in the one with the plus, and we've got eight pi electrons in the one with the minus. Now, remember what I had told you is that if you've got a negative charge there, there's actually two electrons on that C, and those two electrons are actually part of the pi system. So those are indeed going to be the way that you would 
put in those electrons. This one will end up being aromatic. This one will end up being anti-aromatic. And then I'm sure you can use an analogous method to figure out what the what it will look like if it's planar. So just taking two of those electrons out of a double bond and putting them one here and one here where I've got the cursor. That would be it for that. Now for part D, there's two possibilities. This one could be which one of A or B undergoes SN1 reactions faster or which of A or B is more acidic. And we did examples of both of those when we, uh, when we went through that for the five membered rings in the previous on the previous day. Okay, does anybody have any other questions about question three on the test? Would you mind drawing the um, not planar, even though you described it, I couldn't really picture it. All right. Pardon me. All right. All right. All right. Oh, I've got to get rid of that. There we go. And it wouldn't matter which double bond you picked. Is that all right? Julie? Yes, thank you. Okay. Anybody got, else got any questions about number three? Can you just write out the arrows for our notes? Write out the arrows. Oh, I don't know. Can I? Please. I'm looking. All right, all right, all right. I have to redraw it. Okay, I'll do it for this one, okay? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And for the other one, it'll just be this. Is that all right? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, any other, any other questions? Okay. I will, I'll leave that up, I guess. All right, go back to where we were. Here we are, okay. So the answers are going to be based around what you're seeing here on the slides for the other ones. But of course, these are going to be seven membered rings, not five membered rings, but I think you'll be able to see from there. Okay, if you have trouble, we'll look at it on review day. Okay, I promise. All right, naming aromatic compounds. Now remember that 5% of your test is going to be the naming quiz. So after today, you'll actually be able to jump in and do your naming quiz. You won't like it. I'm telling you right now, you'll hate it, but you know, it is open book. At least we can say that. Yeah. So these are the, you, you would should have this in front of you. This is, this is actually something that was that is useful because these are sometimes you commonly use names for some of these structures. So you've got benzene, we've got anisole, which is really methoxybenzene, but that's O-M-E up the top there, but you wouldn't name it anisole. This one is bromobenzene, got the bromine on it. This one here is cumene or isopropyl benzene. This one here is acetophenone. So that's got a C double bond O and a C connected to it, it's a ketone. And this one here would be called 1,3-dinitrobenzene or M-dinitrobenzene. The other, this one here would be called 3-bromonitrobenzene or M-bromonitrobenzene. So the M, I, I'll get to in a minute what that means. We've got benzoic acid, which is this with the carboxylic acid. And just to remind you what a carboxylic acid is. Hang on, let me get rid of that. I wonder if I, no, I don't want to quit that. It's probably going to, no, I don't want to do that. I don't think so. Okay. I'm 
so whenever you see C O O H, it's actually that. So that's a carboxylic acid. That's benzoic acid. And remember, this is open book. This this test. I oh, sorry, it's just a naming quiz. So you know, you should, you can have this in front of you. I don't really mind. Two four di nitro chloro benzene. It would be what this one's called. Aniline for the NH2, benzonitrile for the c triple bond N, benzaldehyde for the CHO. Now, when you when you see CHO, you should interpret it like this. We've got C double bond O connected to a hydrogen. Okay, any questions so far? The one with CH3 on it is called toluene. Can you say toluene? Toluene. Toluene, not toluene or anything else. Toluene. Mm. And the one with the OH is called phenol. All right. So again, these are some of the common names. So you should have this in front of you when you're taking your naming quiz. Okay, let's talk about some of the nuances of naming of aromatic compounds. So when you've got two chlorines on a ring, there's actually three possible ways that those chlorines could be positioned. We can have the chlorines next to each other, which would make it ortho. We could have the chlorines one apart, that's called meta, and the chlorines two apart, or you know, at the end, at each end, that would be called para. Julie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna harass you a little bit. Did you, did you get my email? Um, which one? Well, the last, the one you went in reply to why you got the NMR thing wrong. Yeah, I got it. I totally didn't understand it. You still don't understand? Nope, I wasn't gonna ask you because I didn't want to get you mad. No, okay, but well, now you now this this is actually going to be applicable. What you wrote on yours was meta. What I was looking for was para. I don't even know which one you met though. Well, your answer was meta. Do you see? Do you see the positioning, the relative positioning of the chlorines? I don't. I thought we were talking about the lab. We are. Okay, so I don't know which one you meant, which page you meant. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the last NMR st structure, like the, the last seventh, NMR the, the, the number seven. Okay, and you're saying it was it was not para, it was meta. Yes. And I was supposed to know that because of the height of something, maybe. No, the no because of the way that the peaks were positioned. But I'm just telling you that now. But anyway, I'll give you a bit more context. Okay. All right. So they were in the right order. It was just a matter of where the attachment was coming out of the ring. Yes. Uh, okay. Oh, I see the way I drew it. All right. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you. All right. So you've got um, one, two dichloro. That would be o, o or ortho. One, three would be meta. One, four is called para. Also, think of the word orthogonal. It means at 90 degrees to each other. Para means across. So you can see that that would be at either end. And then meta, I don't know, it's sort of in between ortho and para. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. And then you've got uh, four bromochlorobenzene, which could be P bromochlorobenzene. So that, you can only do the ortho meta para though when you've got two substituents. That's it. You can't do it for anything else. Uh, any questions? I have a question with like numbering. Mm. I'm not sure where to put one at. Okay, so let's look at the bromo chloro one. That's a good question, by the way, Deanna. Did you see the bromo and the chloro one? Mm -hmm. Do you see how I'm calling it P bromo chlorobenzene? Or mm -hmm. four bromochloromene. That's because because it's a chlorobenzene or being named as a chlorobenzene, it's assumed that the chloro is at the one position. Okay. 
So that means that the bromo is at the four position. So it goes oh. one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But why isn't there another number for chlorine? Because it's being named as a chlorobenzene. And if oh, it's so chlor that's account for one and the two and the four. Okay. Right. Yeah, that, that accounts for the one. Okay. I'll give you another look, look down here at this one at the bottom here, mm -hmm. the three substituent one. Mm -hmm. The name is based on the substituent that is single. And that's the bromo here. So if this one's being named as a bromo benzene, you'll notice there's no one there because it's being named as a bromo benzene. Got it. So the chlorines are in the two and the four positions. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. All right. So on that list, acetophenone, anisole, aniline, benzaldehyde, benzoic acid, toluene, phenol, and benzonitrile are common names. And those, form, those will form the basis of names in compounds with these groups. So the, the, these are up here. You'll find them all listed somewhere in this diagram. So this one would be called 2,4-dinitrophenol because of the OH. And this one could be called O-cyclopropyl toluene. You've got the cyclopropyl group there. And the toluene part is the methyl benzene part because that's what toluene is. If you look up here, it's a methyl group. So you're expected to do that. So don't re just, just remember this is supposed to be open book. So you'll have these in front of you. You don't have to memorize any of them. Ketones other than acetophenone are named using the groups connected to the carbonyl group followed by a space in the word ketone. So this would be ethyl and the aromatic ring is called phenyl when it's directly connected to the double bondo. When it's a benzene with a CH2, that's called benzyl. I know that's confusing, isn't it? One is called ethyl, one is called benzyl. And that's a T-butyl group. So ethyl, phenyl, ketone, benzyl, T-butyl, ketone. All right, any questions? Can you repeat that one more time? Okay, about the difference between, between phenyl and benzyl? Yes. Phenyl, you see, is an aromatic ring directly attached to acetyl bondo. Benzyl is an aromatic ring with the CH2 attached to acetyl bondo. So that makes them different. Oh, okay. I got it. It's a bit subtle, but that's how it is. So the phenyl. So how, oh, sorry. sorry. With the ethyl phenyl ketone one? Mm. The phenyl is literally just the benzene itself. Y yes, correct. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Somebody else had a question. Um, I was trying to say how to name it. So I get the. Uh, can you explain how to name it? Named it. Well, well, the the carbonyl group is the C double bond O in the middle. Correct. That's, an, that's the ketone. Yeah, that's the ethyl group is on the one I'm circling now. Mm -hmm. And that's the phenyl group. So it's ethyl phenyl ketone. So it's each side, it's whatever's on each side of acetyl bondo. How do we know which one comes where? Well, technically, it doesn't, it shouldn't matter. But I think in the naming quiz, I state mm -hmm. that it needs to be alphabetical. Okay, so you're looking at E and P, yes. and you see E comes before P. That's how we know it's ethyl phenyl. Yeah, or at least that'll be the rule that you'll see in the naming quiz. Okay. I think in reality, you could probably call it phenyl ethyl ketone and get away with it, but not in my naming quiz because I won't let you. All right, does anybody have any other questions? Okay, and these are fun. So we're naming anilines here now. Anilines have the NH2 group on the benzene ring. So if you've just got NH2 then and a group, then this first one here would be like 3-ethylaniline, or if you want to, M-ethylaniline. That'll work. 
but we need a way to distinguish what's going on. Julie, would you mute please? Thank you. Just having a problem. Sorry. I'll mute you. Maybe. You're muting your video. You need to mute your audio. The problem is I got thrown off my computer because my husband has a conference call and I'm trying to do it on the phone. I'm sorry. No. Oh, okay. Okay. So when you've got the ethyl group though, or it's any other group connected to the nitrogen, we need a way to, to express that. So you'll see that it becomes, in this case, N-ethylaniline. You've got this big N out in the front, and that tells you that the ethyl group is connected to the nitrogen, not somewhere else on the ring. If you've got two groups, then it'd be N-ethyl and methylaniline, again, alphabetical order. And you need to put the N out in front of both in order to show that they're each connected to the N. And in the last one, you'll see there's two methyl groups. So that one would be called N comma N dimethyl aniline and just not, and it's, it's wrong just to put N dimethyl aniline. It has to be N comma N to show both methyl groups are connected to the nitrogen. And then if you com combining these, this could be O ethyl and N dimethyl aniline. So the, what, one of the rules in the naming quiz is everything has to be in lower case. That doesn't include this nitrogen here. You know, this, this N out the front, it looks like a capital N, but it really isn't. That's wild, isn't it? Let me show you something. All right, you see this? Do it upstairs. You see this N here for nitrogen? That's actually not a capital N. It's actually a sim it's a symbol. Julie, would you please can you can you mute or not? All right. We got nitrogen here and it looks like a capital N, but it really isn't. That's a symbol. It just kind of looks like a capital N. Mm. Mind blowing, isn't it? You got me with this one. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, I think you're messing with us. That's N. No, no, it isn't. It's a symbol that looks a lot like a capital N. I don't know where the truth lies. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell you the truth. <laughs> yes. So anyways, so those, uh, those ends need to remain the way they are because there's a symbol for nitrogen. All right. Let's take a look here. This is the, the naming com aromatic compounds practice quiz. I tell you, you're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. But you do get 10 attempts at it, which is kind of cool. So you can get an idea of what this looks like. So you're, this is, you're expected to put the name in here. Are there only 10 questions? On the practice quiz, yes. On the credit quiz, I think there might be more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we believe you because you, you speak the truth. Yeah. Well, on um, yeah, I don't remember how many are on the credit quiz. I've got to tell you. Anyway, you know you can, you, you know, it comes up with the names, right? Now, it, okay. So when you're looking at the names here, the answer is what's in the parentheses. 
the parentheses are not part of the answer. I've had people actually cut and paste these and put them back in and then they get them wrong because they've included the parentheses. But the parentheses aren't part of the answer. The ones on the outside at least aren't. Busted. Yeah, busted is right. <laughs> I look at that. I just roll my eyes if I ever, if ever I see that. I say, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. Yes. Okay, does anybody have any, any questions about the, the naming? Can you explain how to differentiate between like a chlorobenzene, bromobenzene, if there's multiple on the ring? Well, let's say, well, let me, let me say this, Mariah. Let, let, let's say it was like this, this, the bromo and the chlorine here. It could be named for chlorobromobenzene as well. And that would be, a, that would be allowable. Thank you. The only time it's not or it's a condition is you have to, is if it's one of these that I mentioned that has the common name on it and it's going to be named after that definitely like if it has no H it always has to be a phenol if it has a CH3 it's always has to be a toluene uh, any other questions okay well what that means is you don't have any excuses anymore about not being able to do that quiz so you can jump on and do that quiz i would recommend doing it sooner rather than later a lot of people tend to leave it till the night before the test and you know what happens they become sad they become sad why are they sad it's because they have to do this silly quiz and they wanted to study so they're left with a horrible conundrum. Do I lose the, f the 5% for the, for the naming quiz or do I study? Hmm. If only there was a way that one didn't have to make that choice. Ah, but there is. You could do the naming quiz now and not be faced with that choice for night before the test mind-blowing <laughs> you're too much <laughs> when are you opening the naming quiz it's already open ah okay it, it has been actually you could have done it last night if you wanted to actually you could have done it three weeks ago if you wanted to no i was scared last night i've seen it but I seen yeah it. fair enough <laughs> but now you've now you've seen it and nobody has any questions about it. So, you know, I'm assuming everybody's hunky dory with it. Yeah. All right. Where are we? Here we go. Okay. We're going to move on now. We're going to be looking at aromatic electrophilic substitution. So this is one of the first reactions we're going to look at for benzene. Now, way back, way back in organic one, you would have done a reaction that involved a double bond here and bromine. And when you do that reaction, I've got the mechanism down here, you end up with two bromines and they end up being, excuse me, trans. They end up being in a trans configuration on the ring. And it's, uh, and you, you might be wondering, well, okay, so let's say we've got a three double bond system like this benzene here. And you might be wondering, okay, well, why do we end up with just one bromine on the ring instead of two, like we might think we do or should? And the answer to that lies in the fact that this is an aromatic ring and it reacts differently to just a single double bond or the way that double bond would react. So let's look at how this reaction occurs when you've got three double bonds in the ring like this. Mm 
Now on Tuesday, we actually got through these and through the first two Friedel craft ones. Did you intend to do that again? I'm happy for an extra review. No, we didn't get through this. No, Are we didn't. We, we, oh, didn't, okay. we didn't, it, Donna. It, it must be just my notes from the videos. Okay, never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> well, it might have appeared I did because you were hearing my voice, and I, I get that. There you go. There you go. Sorry. Donna's, Donna's hearing voices. <laughs> Not anybody. <laughs> All right. So what's going on is that we got the BR2, we got this FEBR3. Now the FEBR3 has to be in here. There's no, there's no way around it. What the FEBR3 does is it, it takes away the BR- minus from the BR2 and leaves us with the BR+. Plus. Now this is called an aromatic electrophilic substitution because it's aromatic. We've got the aromatic ring. Electrophiles electrophiles are usually positively charged. So electrophile equals electron loving. That's what file means, P-H-I-L-E. So electron loving, or if you'd like negative loving, so electrophiles generally tend to be positive. Nucleophiles, if you think of the word nucleo, is you could call it like nucleus loving. And what's in the nucleus? Protons. So positive loving. So nucleophiles are generally negative. Electrophiles are generally positive. So that's what we're talking about with electrophilic aromatic substitution. Any questions so far? Now it's going to be called substitution because the BR is substituting for an H on the ring. That's where that comes into play. So I'll tell you a little story about this reaction and how it was discovered. I can't remember who did, but the guy who discovered it I should probably look it up at some point. But anyway, the guy who discovered just tried bromine by itself. And, you know, in his lab, he, he, he was he was very happy with this because he added bromine to, to benzene, heated it up, and he got what he expected, or he got something, he got, the, he got this compound, this bromobenzene. He didn't have anything in there. So he was really excited. So he took it to his, fr and he took it to his friend's lab. Now, his friend had a brand new lab. I mean, completely brand new, brand spanking new. Everything was shiny. There was nothing, nothing there at all that was a problem. So they did it at his lab because he wanted to show his friend, you know, what he discovered. And you know what happened? Nothing. He looked like an idiot in front of his friend because, you know, he's, he had it, he put set it up in his friend's lab and he couldn't make it, he couldn't make it work. The reason was, he did it in his lab. It was an old lab and there was rust and stuff everywhere. So enough rust actually got in here. And that was able to catalyze the reaction and end up getting the, the bromine on the ring. So the FEBR3 will also work if it's just rust as well, apparently. So the this is called a Lewis acid this compound because it's got this vacant vacant space here on the on the iron there's no electrons there or anything and what happens is that the compound there can take you know forms its octet by taking a bromine away Excuse me. <coughs> and that leaves us with the BR plus. And the BR plus here is what is actually going to, to do the reacting. Does anybody have any questions so far? Now, 
Now, if you look at the aromatic ring, it's got lots of electrons in it. So that would explain why it might be attracted to something positively charged. So what happens is we've got our Br plus. This arrow here is showing electron movement and it's showing attack on the double bond on the Br plus. And when it attacks, it forms this. So two of the double bonds remain in place. And the other one, the Br goes on one side and the plus goes on the other like that. And then, you see this, this thing here is not aromatic. It's non-aromatic. Can anybody tell me why it's non-aromatic? What makes it non-aromatic? It's not conjugated. That it's form. not it's not conjugated yeah it goes single double single double single single or single charge sorry start again it, goes it also double. has only four electron five electron yeah that's true well that's true too yeah i didn't think of that yeah that's mm -hmm. true but yeah that, that could be anti you might be thinking that might be anti-aromatic but as it turns out no it, it's it's just that it goes double single double single charge single single so it's got two singles here and that, and that makes it not conjugated my point being it would love to be conjugated again or aromatic again so it loses a hydrogen as h plus and it ends up regaining its aromaticity which is really cool for it because that makes it more stable and that's how the substitution occurs so what really is happening is that there's a hydrogen here that ends up being replaced. And the Br replaces the H and the H comes off as H plus. So that's what's going on. Does anybody have any questions? That's just about the general mechanism there. Did he ever figure out that this happened? Well, you know, yeah, he he did he did manage it. You know, he he found he he solved the mystery, and he figured out that it was his friend's new lab that was the problem, and that he needed to go back and do it in his old lab. And then he was able to figure out it was rust that was catalyzing the reaction. So the uh, but you know, rust is not really a great catalyst for this. FeBr three is really much better. All right, any other questions? <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So the general mechanism, let me enlarge this a little bit here. The general mechanism is very much like what we just discussed here. So we've got an E plus, which is the electrophile something positively charged. It attacks the ring using the arrows that I'm showing you here. Now remember an arrow is showing electron movement. That's why the arrows, tail of the arrow starts at the electrons and forms a bond with the electrophile E. And then we get the plus on one of the C's and the electrophile on the one adjacent to it and then we can lose H plus and it forms the it forms the substituted compound. Does anybody have any compound uh, any does anybody have any questions about the Just general the, mechanism here? Yeah. You know, it, it people tend to say, okay, the E plus attacks the aromatic ring, mm. even though technically it's the electrons from the aromatic ring attacking the E. Is that correct? Mm. Yeah, I'd say that's true. So yeah. So the electrophile gets a bad rap as the I think so. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I mean it it in the context of how we draw arrows, it does, yes. Because we're always talking about electron movement. So it's wrong to say the E plus is attacking that that double bond. The double bond's really attacking the E plus. Okay, cool. Now nitration this one is a little bit of a weird one now it does form the no2 plus 
ion here. And you can see the, the mechanism for that over here. We're using H2SO4 and HNO3. That's a mixture of sulfuric and nitric acid. This is one of the first, this is actually the first wet lab we do. We do um, an actual nitration well, at least we would if we were in the lab, I suppose. But the, the mechanism for that, the H2SO4 is really just a source of H plus. So it's just to protonate the, ni uh, the nitric acid. And we end up getting water and then this NO2 plus, which is going to be the electrophile. But you'll see the same pattern as we were dealing with here for the general once we do that. So the double bond attacks the N, which has the positive charge on it. The N is attached. The N is attached to the same C and then the plus is on the C next door. And then we can lose the hydrogen as H plus and that forms the nitrobenzene. Uh, we've already done the, the bromination one and on the previous on the previous slide. But you can see it works just as well with chlorine. So if you have Br2 and FeBr3, that'll work. Or if you have Cl2 and FeCl3, that'll work as well. But the mechanism is going to be the same, except with the Cls, it's going to be Cl, Cl, and Cl, Cl, Cl. So it's the same kind of deal. Does anybody have any questions about nitration or halogenation? Now the Friedel Crafts alkylation secondary and primary, this, this is a little bit more involved. Now you'll notice a pattern occurring here, pretty much with anything that's got a, a halogen on it and uses either aluminum or iron as the, as the Lewis acid. So in the case of ALCL3 and this secondary creature, right, let me also remind you, I wonder if I got it on the next slide. I think I might. Here we go. Yeah, I do. In order to tell if something's primary, secondary or tertiary, you can see it on the top there. Anything that's at the end of the chain where the X, in this case, a halogen is at the end of a chain. I'm calling that primary. If the halogen is in the middle of the chain, they call that secondary. And when there's three carbons connected to it, then I call that tertiary. Does anybody have any questions about primary, secondary, and tertiary when we're talking about halid, uh, halides, alkyl halides? So this one is secondary. And you'll see the pattern is as follows. It's like I showed you earlier, the electrons from the Cl bond for, form a new compound with the aluminum that gives it an octet. That's why this reacts in the first place. So that has a negative charge on it. And then the rest of it has a positive charge. But what I want to point out here is that the positive charge is on the C that had the CL. Does anybody have any questions? So you'll also notice, and I'm just going to draw this first part of it here because it's the important part. But what you'll also notice is that the electrons from the double bond of the benzene ring are attacking this specific C that has the positive charge on it. So you can see that at the end, that's the C that ends up being connected to the benzene ring. And that's important as well. Does anybody have any questions?
Okay. Now I want you to compare that to the Friedel Crafts alkylation with a primary. And you'll notice that with the primary one, with the primary one, we end up getting two products. The product uh, we would expect, which has the CH2 connected from the end, but we also get the same product as what we had for the secondary one as well. And one would wonder why that would be happening. So what's happening here is that we're actually having or engaging in what's called a carbocation rearrangement. And we're, all, we're going to look at what's driving that rearrangement. So if I was just to have the chlorine on the end, and react it with the aluminum chloride as I previously did, I'm going to shortcut this a little bit, I'll make it ALCL4 and that's negative. And then you'll have the rest of it, which will have the positive on the C at the end. So this, it means that the C plus is on the, is on the primary or at the end of the C. It turns out that primary carbocations are incredibly unstable. So they're going to be very much prone to rearrange. So let's go take a look at that on the next slide. So you might remember this, or at least I hope you would, from Organic One, when you would have definitely talked about carbocation stability. And it turns out the most stable carbocations are the tertiary ones. Now the reason for that is due to this phenomenon I've got down here called hyperconjugation. So what happens is when you've got carbons connected to hydrogens that are also connected to the C plus, like we have in a tertiary situation, then the electrons from the CH bond can help stabilize the positive charge on the C plus. If you've got primary you don't have the opportunity to do that because you've got the C directly connected to these hydrogens, but nothing connected to them that can help stabilize the positive charge. So that's why we know that there's this hierarchy of stability for carbocations. And this, and I'm going to write it down here because it's important. So that's tertiary is better than secondary. Is better than primary. Does anybody have any questions? All right, so what's that mean to us? It means if we're forming something primary and it can rearrange, it will. So how does it rearrange? Well, what it does I'll write this out. So what it does in order to become more stable, the hydrogen moves over and that gives a secondary C plus, which is more stable than what it used to be.
So this is primary and it rearranges to secondary. So you might be wondering, well, why do we end up with two products then? Well, it turns out that the reaction of the benzene with the primary is happening at about the same speed as the rearrangement. So you end up getting both the product we might expect just from the addition of the primary and then the one we didn't really expect if it's resulting from the rearrangement of the hydrogen to give the secondary one. Does anybody have any questions? Now I want you to look at this top one and you might be wondering, well, why didn't that rearrange? Well, it was already secondary. It's not going to arrange into something less stable to become primary. But then again, it can't rearrange into something tertiary either because there's not enough carbon. So it's pretty much stuck where it is as a secondary structure. Does anybody have any questions? So what I've got here is carbocations can rearrange to a more stable carbocation, but never to a less stable carbocation. So that's what I was saying earlier. If you've got a secondary, it will never become a primary. If you've got a tertiary, it will never rearrange to become a secondary. So I've got a couple of examples here. And this would be for will be for this one. I'll draw it out. Makes it a bit clearer to see. So you can see that if we were to move this hydrogen over and you can see I've got the, dry, the diagram here, you'd end up with a tertiary C plus, which would be fine. Or if we move the methyl over, we can do that too. Then we can end up with a secondary, secondary C plus. Let's look at what those products would look like. So this would be the primary one. The product would look like this. So that's no rearrangement. Now if it rearranges to the tertiary, the product is going to look like this. And if it rearranges to the secondary, then the product is going to look like this. Does anybody have any questions? So why is there not two products with the primary one? There would actually be three with this one because the primary could rearrange to a secondary or a tertiary. So you could have all three of those products. but I'm not showing it there. I'm just showing the carbocations here. I'm not showing the, the products, but I am showing the products over here on my screen. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. 
now I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go back and I'm going to show some examples from old tests. Okay, but you know, there's just one other reaction here, and that's the Friedel Crafts acylation. Now, for this one, it's a it's a kind of a similar deal, except the acylation is because we've got a C double bond O connected to a Cl. Now, these are these are less prone to rearrangements than the the carbocations we've been talking about. So the product is just going to be whatever the whatever this R is connected to the C double bond O and the CL. So I'll give an example of that before I go show some examples from old tests on the other thing here. But let's say it was, I'll just do standard benzene ring here and we'll say We'll say that and then we'll use ALCL3 as our Lewis acid and the product you can see will end up being whatever it is without the CL and then just connected right on to the aromatic ring. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, let's take a look at... Uh, one second, sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, so, um, so you're saying there is no rearrangement right. possible here. Right. And uh, the CL, uh, you just substitute it to yeah. the chlorine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. All right, so let's look at some examples here. So this one is a Friedel Crafts uh, alkylation, like we were talking about. And that's one of them. There's another one on this test as well. And there it is there. Now what I want you to do, focus on what happens when the chlorine is gone. So look at the the kind of thing that you, you're seeing there if the chlorine is gone. Is that chlorine primary, secondary or tertiary? That's what you've got to be asking yourself. Is it primary, secondary or tertiary? Primary? It's primary. So that means that rearrangement is going to be possible here. Now take a look at the other one, this one here. What are you going to be left with if the chlorine is gone? Tertiary. Tertiary C plus. And that would mean rearrangement is not possible because if it's, if it's tertiary, why would it try and rearrange into something less stable? So that's what I want you to understand. That's a common question people have. They say, well, I'm looking at it. How do I know if it's going to rearrange or not? Well, what I'm saying is if it can rearrange, it will, but it has to rearrange and it has to be able to rearrange into something more stable than it currently is. And the hierarchy of stability, again, is tertiary C plus is more stable than secondary C plus is more stable than primary C plus. Does anybody have any questions? So just to be clear, if it's primary, it'll try to rearrange to two and three? It could rearrange to two or three, but which one do you think it would prefer to rearrange to? Three. The three, yeah, if it could. Let's take a look at this one. What I'd like you to do is see if you can figure out how this to make this rearrange into a tertiary C plus. Okay, that's what I'd like you to do. See if you can re figure out how to rearrange it into a tertiary C plus. Don't 
I mean, really, I'm asking you to figure out, well, what would you move in order to make that happen? So the carbocation is going to look like this. If we draw it out. Okay, can you can anybody tell me what you would move in order to turn it into a tertiary? The hydrogen. The hydrogen. Yeah, so we move the hydrogen over here and this becomes our that becomes our carbocation and the product this carbocation would form would look like this. I'm going to draw this just as a line structure. Does anybody have any questions? So you're saying here secondary would not form at all because we could, could have a methyl no, no, shift. No. It could. You could have a methyl shift, but that would form a secondary. Okay. And could we have a combination of both as yeah, a product? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, I think if and you were to include two, any two products, I'd be happy with that. Okay. Two out of three or even all three. Three would warm my heart. If so you're saying there is three possible product for this one? Yeah, yeah, you could have the primary, secondary or the tertiary. If you did all three. Oh, yeah, true. I, I mean, I, 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 I would... Oh gosh, I don't know. I might faint. <laughs> but but um, if you but if you just if you just had two of them, I'd be I'd be happy as Larry. I would. Mm. Don't ask me who Larry is, but I'd I'd be happy as him. And that to be correct, obviously. All right. Uh, let's, uh, well, let me, let me do the, let's do the secondary one just for kicks. Because people were talking about it. I suppose, yeah, we could just do a methyl shift. We can, we can do that like that. And the product that we'd get from that would look like this. Does anybody have any questions about how I'm getting that, that product? Any questions? All right, well, that's good. If I don't do the lines, would it be wrong? No, 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 Deanna, I just, I was being lazy a little bit. Okay. But I would want you to see that with this one, I'd want you to see with this one that it would, uh, you'd end up getting this as a cation. And because it's already tertiary, it won't rearrange and the product would look like this. Well, actually you don't know this yet, but the product, don't worry about the relative positioning, just focus on this part. But the product would look like that and it would be just connected to where the CL was and there would be no other product. Now, I know we haven't gone into this yet. What happens when you've got something else already on the ring? That's a whole other explanation of fun right there that we haven't gone into yet. All right, does anybody have any questions? Um, I think the only thing is, can you show how you are connecting this? 
it, it's always you know what I mean? well mary it's, it's always going to be connected from the ring to the c with the plus on it that, that's the pattern that's that's what it's always going to be so the bond right now you are uh that's yeah so new, this that, is that, the bond that bond. okay that's the new bond right there that's how it's always going to be so wherever the plus is that's where it's bonding to and there's a new bond from the ring to that c with the plus on it okay. is that okay yeah thank you yeah. All right, so take a look at this top one here. Do you, that's a Friedel Crafts rearrangement. Do you, do you think that's going to rearrange or not? No, that's tertiary. It's tertiary, no, it's not going to rearrange. But there's going to be another one here where it will. See if we can find it. There he is. So that one you can see is primary. So that one definitely will rearrange. Is anybody having trouble seeing this? Me. Okay. Who's who's asking? Who's asking? It's, it's Deanna. Deanna. Yeah. Yeah. Can you like? I don't know. It. Okay. Let's go back to the other one. Do you see where the CL is? See how it's connected to a C that has three Cs connected to it? Mm -hmm. That makes it tertiary. Mm -hmm. This one is on the end you can see the cl is connected to a ch2 so we know that's going to be primary oh okay got it and then that way you say oh yeah that one's going to rearrange dr musgrave does it matter where on the ring it attaches it does and that's all I'm going to say. It does. <laughs> we haven't gotten into it yet. Okay. Yeah, but I promise we we will. You you'll re, you'll regret it because you'll say, "Oh gosh, I wish I didn't know." Now. All right. Uh, take a look at this one. Do you, do you think this one is going to rearrange or not? No. No, it's tertiary. See, it's got three C's connected. All right. What about this one? Do you think it's going to re rearrange? Yeah, it's secondary, right? It's secondary, but it could rearrange to tertiary. If you move the hydrogen, this hydrogen here over, then that will convert to a tertiary. That's pretty cool. All right. Any other questions? Do you typically move the hydrogen if you can, but if there's yeah. nothing, you need yeah. to remove. Yeah, generally, that's what I would do. If it was me, that's what that would be my general plan of attack. All right, any other questions? All right, well, I think that's a good place to, to drop it for, the, for today. And we'll continue on with the fun on Tuesday. Okay. Any, uh, if you, anybody has any other questions, you can. I'll, I'll, I'll be here for a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Right, Lester, should we do the questions in the blue book? To practice the um, well, it's going to be a little bit hard because we you, we haven't gone through that many of them yet. 
So I might I might actually be inclined to wait a little bit on that. Yeah. I reckon that I would recommend doing your naming quiz if you're looking for something to do. Okay. Um, but that's like where we're going to have to go once we learn more mechanisms. Is there yeah, I, I, well, you, yeah, should, yes, and, and the, well, not just the blue book, but this, uh, where are we? The test one mechanisms, here we go, yeah, the test one mechanisms file, just that, that as well, because that's going to have all the, that's going to have all of the answers there, but we haven't been through a lot of the reactions yet, so it's going to be a little bit harder to, to pick things out yet. Yeah, and is it the same for the test? Like if you put the mechanism in an extra point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get an extra point, that's right. Okay, that's cool. That's all right. Okay.